Hey everyone, Omerko here, self-taught web developer. In today's video, we will use the observers from Material to observe our content. Before we start, don't forget that this video belongs to a much bigger series here on my YouTube channel, so check that out. Before I do anything, I will first generate my component where I will use my observers. For that, I will use command of ng, g for generate, c for component, and I will generate my component in components slash cdk slash observers. Now, in my app.component.html file, I will hide this layout component from the last video. If you wish to watch that video, you will have a link down in the description of this one. Right after it, I will set the comment of cdk observers. I can also use here app observers component that we just generated. And also I will set here the ending comment, which is end of cdk observers. Observers are used separately from material, so we would need to import their own modules so we could use those. For that I will go into my app.module.ts file. At the top of this module, I can import my observers module and I will import that from at angular slash cdk slash observers. Also, don't forget to pass this observers module down in imports array. Now that we have everything in place, we can create our content and observe the changes on that content. For that, I will go into components, then cdk, and I will open up my observers.component.html file. In here, first I will create one div with the style attribute. For this style, I will set text align to be center and margin on a top to be 50 pixel. This div here will be just the wrapper for our content that we will have inside. So inside I will create another div and this div can hold a class of parent next to it. This class of parent here is not important, but for the sake of this tutorial, I will just indicate that this div will be the parent where we will well observe on our changes, well, the changes of our content. And for the content of this parent div, I will create just one input field with the type of text. And also I will create one paragraph down below to present the text from the input field in the paragraph as well. Moving now into observers.component.typescript file. In here, first of all, I will create one property which will be content text, which will be the type of string and initially it will be just the empty string. And below here, I will create one method called content changed. This method can be just, well, will, will not return anything to us, which means that it will be a void method. The idea of this method here is that it will run whenever some content was changed on our website. To test if the method will run smoothly, I will use console.log here and I will log inside content changed so we can test it. Back in my HTML file, I can now bind that property and the method that we created. First of all, I will use ng-model on my input field and here I will bind my content text that I have property. In the paragraph below, I will also property bind this content text so we could see the text from our input field down below as a paragraph. Now for observing the changes. For that we have a specific event that we can use and we can use it as we already imported the module earlier. The event that I will use is called CDK observe content and I will use it on my parent div. So here I will use CDK observe content. Whenever this event runs, I wish also to run my content changed method that we created in our TypeScript file. And in my browser right now, we can test this. Just by typing something in my input field, we can see the changes. We could see, well, that two-way data binding is working. We can see the text down below and we can see that content change, the log is also showing in our console, which means that we currently ran five times this same method. So if I would type here much faster, we can see that content changed will run over and over again. 
This is obviously a problem because the method runs, well, too many times. As an example here, if this input field was used to search something, then that search method could run too many times, 35 times in this example, which means that it could really easily break something for us. For that, we could also delay our method calls. Nothing to worry here because we won't create that delay on our own. There is already pre-built delay with these observers. To use that delay on my parent here, I will bind debounce. This debounce is the delay and the debounce will accept values in milliseconds. So I will pass 3000 here for 3 seconds. Now if I would type fast in my input field, we won't see anything in our console until 3 seconds expires. After 3 seconds, then we will see that content changed with me, which means that this content changed method ran just once for all of these key inputs. This will make our calls much faster and also more user friendly if we would have that faster delay. But this will be all for this video guys. If you liked what you saw, please click like and subscribe as I post new content weekly. Thank you all once again and I will see you in my next video. Bye bye.